Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm gonna to tell you about this sword right here. This is the LK Chen Song Han Dao, and a couple quick caveats before I do the review. One, it was sent to me as a review sample, so I didn't pay for it. If you think that makes me biased, you know at the start. Uh, two, I don't study Chinese swordsmanship. I don't know really the systems to move this around, but I'll include links that I found helpful uh, from other YouTubers that, uh, that might inform you, or at least give you some idea of watching a practitioner who knows how to move it, move it around and, and how that might feel. Um, anyway, I do study swordsmanship, just not Chinese swordsmanship, and I have a sense of how to move a sword, but I'm not any kind of master. So keep my musings and ramblings as, as you know, in that context that I am a novice in that area. Uh, the sword as well is $330 on El Kitchen's website. It's $355 on Cult of Athena right now, and that's kind of the frame of reference I'm going to keep the sword cost in and when I evaluate is it worth it or not so do not know that as well LK Chin site is a little cheaper but I think you have to pay for shipping right now and that is a pretty substantial cost when it comes from China directly so Cult of Athena might be the cheaper option for you anyway um, I'm going to review the sword plan is to show you a build quality fit finish and all that kind of stuff then move on to abusive testing as you can see right now it's pretty much in the format that LK Chen sent it to me and I've cut a few things with it I've swung it around a little bit and it's a fun sword and I'm really looking forward to using it but the the basic gist of this video is that I'm going to show you a build quality then I'm going to go out and chop it so at the moment I haven't put it through its, through its paces and I don't know uh, but I can tell you at least about swinging it around and show you how it was constructed and all that before I do that before before it's too late. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to start talking about the sword itself. Uh, starting with this pommel right here, the ring pommel. Now this looks like an improvement over some of the pieces that I've seen on the Heavenly Horse and the uh, the Royal Arsenal Dao. The first batch that I got from LKHN was pretty early in production. This one was sent to me later, and I've had it for a while, but this shows an improvement. One, it's a little thicker, which isn't necessarily needed, uh, but probably more fitting on this particular type of sword. But I like the patina on it. It's done in a more natural way, and it doesn't you know, kind of rub off on my fingers, and I'm not worried about it chipping. So it's nice to see that improvement. Uh, I do notice hammer marks, asymmetry, tool markings, and things like that. So do know that if you're expecting perfection here, you're not necessarily going to get it. Uh, there is kind of a handmade aspect to the the pommel here and that it's not it's not perfect but it seems really quite robust i wouldn't want to get thumped in the head with it and it feels on there quite securely if i move on to the to the grip there's some bit, bits to say about this well one uh, it's thicker where it meets the cross guard it's thinner where it meets the pommel down here in terms of thickness if i should flip it the other way it's pretty uniform in terms of thickness the interesting piece is that it's really teardrop shaped so i'm grabbing the sword the wrong way now and i can definitely feel that something is off if i turn it the other way it really locks into my knuckles and allows me to index the sword incidentally indexes very very well the grip feels very comfortable i can get two hands on it i can hold it with one definitely feels like it would come alive better in two hands um, but very easy to index very easy to know how where the edge is at all times to feel like you're connected to it and uh, having a sword with a two hand grip allows you to maybe put that that power behind it if you want to uh, but i don't think you have to you can certainly or at least i can hold this with with one hand effectively um, grip is just very comfortable the material used on here this cord i'm going to maybe refer to it as paracord i'm not sure if that's the right term but whatever kind of cordage they've used gives me some sort of traction doesn't matter if my hands are wet doesn't matter if i'm uh, where i'm gripping it i feel where the edge is and i feel like i really get a lot of purchase on the sword and that it's not going to move around it feels very 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 snug like i could pull it like it could be trapped in the bind and i could still really have really have an effective grip on it if i move up to where the cross guard is here i don't know the logic necessarily behind this kind of teardrop piece if it has a martial context to pop somebody with or if it just lets you know which way to, to hang the sword or hold the sword but it has this teardrop shape it looks like this guard and the uh, blade collar have a different type of patina to it i don't know if they're the same they kind of look painted or powder coated or something like that so i don't know how well they'll hold up but it's on there very secure doesn't move around and i don't see any gap or anything like that on the cross guard area where the blade color meets. Often Japanese swords have a, uh, a washer area here that would hide any gap. This one does not, and the blade color seems fit in such a way that there's no gapping or, or anything like that that's apparent. Not that that would necessarily be a huge deal, but it's worth knowing that I don't spot it here. I'm not sure what else to mention about the, the guard. It's small, it doesn't offer a, a lot in the way of protection, it has a unique shape that would tell you which way to hold the thing, but not you know, necessarily anything that's gonna offer a lot of protection or offensive potential. Uh, if I move on to the blade collar, I don't know. I see this kind of larger blade collar on a lot of Chinese swords that have this uh, 
thing that runs up the kind of the Ricasso section and covers a portion of the blade. And I don't honestly know why that's there. If it offers some potential or mitigation of damage to the blade, if you bind or hold another person's blade or offers you, you know, some, some protection that way, I'm, I'm not sure, but it is something that I see on Chinese swords. This one, uh, it's got a little notch on the actual steel part of the blade so that the blade collar can fit in here. And then up here, I don't see that same notch, but it might be there. I guess I'll know when I get to dismantling the blade. Uh, but this collar has kind of flaps on it and it's a little more open on sides. I can get my fingernail underneath and kind of pry it if I want to. And it has some, you know, basically it's not as, as perfectly fit as the rest of the hilt is. It kind of starts uh, waggling a little bit and, and not being fit as well as it could. And as it meets the scabbard, it kind of wax on the back. Now I've pulled this in and out of the scabbard a few times, but this tends to hit or stop or get whacked on the on the scabbard a little bit and a, you know a couple quick <laughs> slams of the scabbard might mitigate that mine now has like wood chunks and stuff like that and dust that have been accumulated in those areas where it hits but it's it's fitting a little bit better but for a while it would kind of snag in various spots on the scabbard as i move to the scabbard as well it's worth noting that um there's not really much other than the wood here you can kind of see on mine where it's it's been whacked into the, into the blade collar area but very very simple scabbard it's stout enough to you know perhaps be a weapon onto itself but uh very simple wood colored with you know some very you know maybe oil or not not lacquer anyway in the same regard and then bound in cord and i don't know if this is historic or not though i'm going to assume lk chen they generally do the research and try to do one for one copies as much as possible it's just worth knowing that it's less ornate than many of the other lk chen scabbards it doesn't have the same kind of metal fittings on the on the swords um, it doesn't have the same kind of hand hand drawn or the the paintings that you see or lacquer work or kind of depth that i see on some of the other scabbards. So very simple, not that it's a bad thing or not handsome on, on its own in its own way, but uh, certainly more simple than other LK Chen scabbards are. If I move on to the blade, well, this is a differentially heat treated blade. So it has a hamon, which might come out in some lights, though it's probably not coming out in the one that you're seeing right now. I'll do my best to show it to you on camera though. It does have an attractive appearance if you can catch it in the right light. It's very subtle though, based on the polish and not having a huge amount of etch on the blade. So it's worth knowing that other LK Chen blades that I've tested uh, with the, apart from the Frontier Tongdao have been uh, through hardened. So this will be interesting, a blade that's this thick, this wide and kind of chop centric, how well it holds up to some of the abusive tests that are gonna come its way. Um, as it is though, other dimension on the blade, it looks obviously very simple, but it's got some some worthy notes. It's uh, thinner or skinnier down at the base here and thicker and like other LK Chen blades has a command of distal taper that other swords seem to miss it gets wider up at the tip area here but also thinner and so it still has a very tip heavy presence it still feels like it's certainly very chop centric obviously the tip would note that you wouldn't want to get poked with it but it's not a very thrust centric blade um, anyway it has distal taper and some command that likely <laughs> makes the blade feel as nimble as it does it's still still a chopper definitely but one that you can maneuver in such a way uh, that i can move it with one hand i can deliver a cut with authority and with two hands i can really i can really throw some chutzpah behind it uh, one other note though is that the blade does seem to have very minor but it, it seems to have just a little bit of a cant it's canted off it, it's not twisted exactly but if i line the sword up and it, it seems to be pointing just off a degree and then maybe having a little twist at the end so that escaped quality control a little bit it's very minor it's it's tough to see in the camera but it, it does have a bit of a twist and it didn't come from me me cutting with it it also has a darker spot up here which i can't tell why that is if that's something from heat treatment but it's got a, a marginal dark spot here which isn't isn't too big a deal i tried buffing it out it didn't come out so there's there's just a a blemish on the sword that is darker and i'm guessing it's the result of, of heat treatment more than likely uh, anyway as it is dimensions and all that kind of stuff will be in the description down below it feels very nimble and comfortable in the hand uh, for what it is <laughs> it is not a nimble sword uh, but for a big cleaver a big dowel like this i usually expect them to be very cumbersome and clunky in the hand and this while it, it definitely feels like it is a chop centric blade and is meant to deliver an authoritative cut it, it still feels like I can maneuver it around like I could parry, like I could block, like I could move it effectively. So uh, well done. Anyway, that's where I am in the review right now. I just wanted to show you kind of features and all that kind of stuff. Um, other other things I suppose we're noting on the edge, the planes of the blade are reasonably smooth, smoother than some of the other LK blades have been. Minor rippling, things like that, and it doesn't have 
a big secondary bevel. The edge profile is very, very narrow and it gradually tapers down to the to the end. There's no you know big, thick, robust blade immediately tapering. There's a very gentle taper. It's likely gonna be a very effective cutter and I'm anxious to get out there and see how well that works, which is where we're at in the review right now. As it is for 350 bucks, this is a pretty substantial investment for a sword that seems as simple as it is. I, I, I do like it. I think it's cool to also have it based on other historical examples. I don't know exactly which ones of those are though. LK Chen tends to make one for one replicas or at least swords that are very period correct for the type of sword they're recreating. And it certainly feels like a weapon, but you're paying a bit of a premium for it. 355 bucks for a very simple, simple looking Dao is, is quite a bit of money in contrast to some of the other some of the other Dao offerings that are out there, which may not be as historically accurate or as nimble or comfortable in the hand, but they certainly uh, come for a little bit less money. That said, I haven't really gotten a chance to swing it around at anything yet. I venture a guess that it's going to cut quite a bit better than some of the other pieces out there, and I'm looking forward to try that out. At, at the moment, though, it does, seem, it does seem like a good sword, just at a bit of a price premium. Uh, but I'll hold my final thoughts till when I'm done with the actual cutting and uh, when I can examine the build quality and the full construction uh, when I have it all disassembled and laid apart. And that's where we're at in the video now. So as it is, hopefully that's been enough looky look. I'm going to go choppy chop now. And choppy chop is what I do. I start with a couple flicky cuts and I don't have any success moving through a pool noodle. And then I move to doing a two-handed strike and I move through it with the first blow but after that I have nothing but bad luck cutting the pool noodle. I don't know if it's that the edge isn't particularly sharp even though it, it did cut through really well one time that would suggest to me that the edge is sharp and it certainly feels sharp um, but from there I just I can do certainly aggressive blows that would be uh, quite devastating cuts on a person but I don't get the pool noodle I don't get it to cut. I try slashing, I try hitting it harder, I try Hulk smash, and no matter what I do, I just don't have a ton of luck cutting through cutting through the pool noodle. I, I might blame the, the slight cant of the blade or the slight, the slight twist, but honestly, it's just my form. The, the sword is sharp enough, and I'm not doing a good job of really showcasing it here. It didn't do a great job cutting pool noodles, though, or at least that was my experience. Now from there, I move on to water bottles, and this is pretty much the opposite experience. It cuts through water bottles really well. I can do little flicky cuts, and it cuts through the water bottles. Thrusting, not so much, but generally just upward cuts, bad edge angles. Any Anything that I throw at a water bottle is, seems to, to yield nothing but success. It's also pretty rare for me to get the bottles that stay on the stand. I know that's something that other people are capable of, but um, apart from my form being bad and, and other user-related errors, the stand that I have is crooked and used and doesn't have an uneven, have, has an uneven surface as well as the ground it's sitting on is uneven. So the fact that I can get water bottles to balance on it at all is something of a trick. Anyway, I had a lot of good success in cutting water bottles, but pool noodles, not so much. I moved on then to branches, and this is where the sword started to take some damage, and it did some little flicky cuts and things like that, and at that point I didn't notice any, any damage or any issues, but when I did kind of a big old Hail Mary strike on a branch, I cut deeply into the branch. It certainly was a very, very hard cut and cut uh, into the branch and into these knots pretty substantially, but the sword took some damage. Now there's a big old bend towards the towards the end of the sword, and it's certainly worse than it was. And this is where I start to find out that the sword is a little bit on the soft side. So obviously differentially hardened blades, they're, you know, kind of a prerequisite of that is that it might take a bend. Uh, that was my experience here. This took a bend, though, I would say pretty easily, and moreover, it's straightened pretty easily. You can see that I go and give it a little love tap on the stand, and then basically it straightens out. It straightens out too much, and I have to kind of whack it the other way, and all these little love taps are, are getting the sword to, to straighten out. I usually have to hit it a little bit harder, and it, it gave me the impression that the metal was, was quite a bit softer than perhaps it should be. From there, I'm doing some more cuts, and realistically, if I move through the target and I get a reasonably good swing, it yields positive results. All right, forgive me not being mic'd, but this cut is interesting. One, it's very smooth. It came off with a very smooth surface. It cut the wood really well. This is cotton wood. It's not a particularly dense wood. It's from a branch that was cut down a, a little while ago or a tree that was felled a little while ago. So it's had a week or two to harden, but not. Uh, it's still pretty, pretty wet. Uh, anyway, 
Point is that this is a really smooth cut all the way through, but it's a very bad cut. You can see the angle. I was going for a 45, and this is a this is a few different angles happening here. My edge alignment started here, but my I, something is wrong with the way I'm holding the edge that I'm coming in at. Any number of things could be wrong with my technique. That's not the point. What I want to show is just that I'm cutting at a bad angle. I'm putting a lot of pressure into it because it cracked. I believe this crack in the wood is from this cut and not, not previous cuts. Uh, but it's still very smooth despite me having a very bad bad angle uh, and a lot of momentum and force behind it. The, the sword cut through pretty well. Now I haven't making any, made any effort to straighten the sword since that cut and it's still very, very straight. It's still, well, as straight as it was after I left it and the edge is is still about as sharp as it was. It may, be a, may as have lost a little bit of the, the bite, the tooth to it, but not substantially. I wouldn't want to slide my fingers on it any more than I am right now. The next thing I do is I take it to a metal can. This is where the blade starts to be damaged. There are little nicks and pings and dings. Small damage, nothing terribly substantial. Uh, it's not so much that it would buff out, but at the same time, it's not so substantial that you couldn't resharpen it or profile the edge with, with, a, with a ton of difficulty. Or with, it wouldn't be very difficult is, is kind of what I'm saying. There's nicks and things like that, but I would say that those are, are pretty minor in the grand scale and, and could be easily removed by somebody quasi-competent with sharpening. I'm even semi-confident that I could do it. Now after that I took to just basically chucking the sword, and honestly it, it held up reasonably well to this, it didn't loosen up substantially, there was a little bit of rattling in the guard after all of these throws, uh, but basically it, it held up. And Now it did take some bends after doing this, and I decided to just, uh, you know, let's go whack it into wood some more, and this is a, a big old dry branch, and so it's, it's a little bit harder, I wanted to see what happens, and each strike it buries itself really deeply into the wood, and I have to kind of stop to get it out, it is a very meaty cleaver this this blade for sure um, eventually i'm able to chop through the wood and at the end of it i i do have a little bit more of a bend uh, but it's a bend again that i can straighten out i don't have to do too much with it it cants off to a side i give it a little love tap and i'm, I'm back in business with a straight sword A couple more tosses and I go inside and I start to clean off the sword and, and more or less this is a little different I was actually late to class and I was like alright I want to clean this off quick and then I have to actually stop rather than test, test it to destruction so um, what I did is I, I cleaned it off and I did some polish to remove the gunk and schmutz and stuff from the blade uh, just so I could see what the damage was on the sword and uh, more or less it was scratched as you might expect after removing the gunk some of the the cans and the branches and the like have uh, caused a lot of scratches and whatnot but along the spine which is kind of tough to see there's some slight blistering in the back of the sword like it's it's got little uh, ripples and stuff along along the spine and it might be tough to see but you can kind of see how the metal uh, has a little bit of a wave to it along along the back of the blade and also uh, the edge is, is certainly taking some damage some some pings and dings and things like that there's also this chip and i'm not sure exactly where it happened i think it must have been when i threw it and it hit the uh the trellis or something like that on the side uh, also because it's soft and i recently got a new toy i tested sharpness or rather hardness i should say uh with these new hrc test files uh, the 40 file bites into the spine of the sword and the 65 file doesn't bite in to the edge so i'm probably using them wrong but um, the spine is very soft and the edge is very hard all right on to more abusive stuff continuing with the destruction i went in the back and i struck a brass portion of uh, a, a fitting basically attached to a metal barrel just to see what happens if i strike a softer metal but in a thicker piece and, and see how the edge holds up and good news is it held up really really well in fact if i can clean the blade i don't know if i could tell where i actually cut because i didn't notice any edge damage that wasn't already there uh, the second strike I tried to hit a little bit harder and I missed and I struck the a brick underneath it Which is basically a landscaping brick a concrete block for a better better for lack of a better word And the blade broke catastrophically breaking off right where the guard meets the the tang um, So a couple things to call out here 
One, I'm very fortunate I wasn't injured. Obviously, the blade bounced back. It struck me in the leg. I tore my pants a little bit, but I got a little slap on the leg, a gentle reminder that I should probably wear more appropriate attire and be on guard uh, when I'm doing abusive things, because obviously I didn't get out of the way in time, and I could have been bleeding out in the backyard. I'm glad that I'm not, uh, but it is a word of warning that this is dangerous, and obviously I was not exercising enough caution because I got slapped by it. Uh, two, though, the sword broke catastrophically in a way that's unacceptable. Uh, this, to me, casts doubt on all of the swords of this type made from the same metal, and I hope L.K. Chen uh, takes this pretty seriously and addresses any, you know, at least inspects, double-checks all the swords that they have out there to make sure that uh, there aren't swords with similar potential failure points. So, I know, and in fairness, I was abusing the sword, right? I slapped metal with it, and or not metal, I slapped, uh, well, that's true, I did slap metal. I chopped wood, and I was very abusive with it, and I threw it at a tree, and I did all of these things that were very abusive prior to it breaking. So is it fair? I'm going to say no. This, this type of breaking is not fair. Um, I think that it broke prematurely. I was obviously expecting it to make it to the croquet stick of doom. It did not. It broke at the hilt, and... I would say that this is, even though I was abusing it, this is an unacceptable level of breakage, and it gives me concern for other swords out there, even if those swords will only be used for normal types of, of usage. All right, Swordwoods, I think the hilt breaking where it did, when it did, is going to make a lot of you pretty nervous about buying this sword, and it would certainly make me, on that individual example, not recommend it. Now, after it broke, I reached out to LK Chen, I sent him some photos and kind of the snippet of where it broke and just said, hey, heads up, here's what happened to me, and they sent me out another example to test to see if if it's a systemic problem in their line or not. Now, I haven't tested this one. Obviously, LK Chen sent it to me knowing that this is what had happened, so uh, bear those things in mind as you see it. I'm going to take this example, which is I've labeled number two here, and I am going to see if it has similar problems. Now, before doing this, I haven't taken any fancy photos or done anything. I can note that it appears dead on straight. It doesn't have the same kind of cant that the one that I had did. Um, I did also take the hardness files to it already, and I scraped it, and it has very similar results to the previous one. It has uh, the 40 file bites in pretty much everywhere. The 65 file doesn't bite in on the edge. So uh, it's somewhere in there. I'm suspecting that it's going to act very similar, but hopefully not break at the hilt. We're going to test it and see if it does. That's what also this ridiculous getup is. Obviously, I'm not wearing this armor correctly, but these are what I had. I've grown a little in this pandemic time, but this is what I have to protect my legs in the event that it breaks the same way. I've got on thicker jeans, and I'm putting on some uh, something that's going to be a little harder to cut through. So... All right, hopefully my audio is picking up here. I am seeing a little bit of bending. It's kind of canted off to the side now. I'm going to strike on the side. Yep. Back to straight. Quite soft. Not bad, but... So, I missed once. And I did smack the brake, though it doesn't appear as hard. Uh, the edge has held up remarkably well, realistically speaking. I mean, this is very little damage for striking into striking into the uh, the metal and the brass. I'm not seeing something that couldn't come out. So merit-wise, a little soft here, hard here. This this seems like something that you'd be able to straighten out. Seems like something that you'd be able to sharpen and, and use. However, on a abusive targets, obviously we've got some sort of problem that is is not unique to the one that I had. Now this grain structure, from what I can tell, looks a little bit coarser. Maybe I'll line them up and lay them next to each other. But again, uh, same thing. I'm not seeing anything inherently design flaw wise, right? Uh, this looks like a good meaty tang to me. It looks like it's relatively well pressure fit. I do see what looks like little welds here. Maybe that's reduced the structural integrity enough around this area, but I don't see uh, like black 
areas that indicate that it was flawed or broken or something. I think I see I spot something here, but that looks like dirt from falling on the ground. I don't spot the kind of reciprocal black area over here. Um, I'm not a metallurgist. I don't know. This is likely coarser than what it should be, but I don't see anything design flaw wise. I still want to see how it still holds up on the croquet stick. So. So obviously I really can't give it my all. I've, uh, I'm holding on to the, the nubbin area here, but you can kind of also see maybe where that welding uh, is the, the cause of the issue. Not, not entirely sure. Anyway, there we go. For what it's worth, it did not break on the croquet stake of doom. I left some pretty significant chips over here, but again, you know, I, th I think this could potentially be sharpened out. <laughs> it's, it's really, really unfortunate that it seems to have a, a significant problem in the Tang area. So, uh, basic gist is, though, that the swords broke catastrophically in the same place. And again, as I look at the cross-section here, what I see is, is the same thing. I see a robust Tang, and I see something that looks like it has the meat to, to hold together. Um, I see a grain structure that might be a little bit coarse, but not wildly so. I don't see any black lines or anything that's indicative of cracks that were already there. I see tack welds that, or welds, I don't know if they're tack welds, I, I don't, don't know how to tell, but what look like welds to me um, along the where the cross guard is to maybe keep it in, in a tight position, which may have weakened the structural integrity around the area. At least I'm speculating that's the case. Um, and yeah, it broke the same way. So obviously there's some systemic issue. So uh, what do I think about this at the end? Well, obviously both swords failed at a, at a point that I would argue is unacceptable. Uh, breaking at the hilt while striking a brass reinforced fitting, obviously it's abusive. What I'm expecting would be chipping or bending or something like that. Uh, it might even be one thing if the hilt bent in, but breaking right at the hilt and then bouncing back and hitting me is, is uh, no, is not acceptable. At least it's not to me. You can argue that both swords underwent abuse and that breaking swords happened, yes, uh, but breaking at the hilt in a modern context, I, I think is, is unacceptable. And it would make me leery about buying these. I'd recommend you avoid them in their current configuration. I do want to specify that uh, I have every confidence that LK Chen will do the right thing in doing whatever it takes to find what is causing this issue and remedy it. And further, if they offer it in a different configuration with their folded steel, um, I've tested swords with their folded steel before and they've surprised me at how resilient they've been. The Royal Arsenal Dow, for example, is a little one pound sword. It's a little wimpy thing that I would have thought would have broken immediately after striking the croquet stake of doom. And it took several strikes before it broke and it was, it was a little dainty thing. Uh, so if this sword were made out of a similar steel, I'd have a little bit more confidence in, uh, in trying it again or, or saying that it would probably have a different result. However, this is obviously unacceptable. It broke at the same point in, in two different swords. So um, at, in the current configuration, I would say no until LKHN does something to revise it and ensure that uh, this type of issue issue doesn't happen. Anyway, uh, it is also worth noting that LKHN, I appreciate them. I do want to give a special thanks that they sent me an example, but after telling them that it broke at the hilt, they sent me another example to see if it's a systemic issue, kind of knowing that I'm going to put this stuff out on the internet. So I appreciate them doing it, and I, I further think that that gives me the impression that they're probably going to do the right thing and uh, uh, take care of, of this issue as it is. But anyway, I don't know exactly what they're going to do. I'm going to put the information out. You decide what to do with it. And if there are any updates or if I see anything that would uh, change my mind about recommending, I'll put links in the description down below. Anyway, as it is, no, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it had something going for it in terms of shape. But honestly, even if it didn't break, it's a little too bendy for me. I would say that it taking a set as easily as it did is, is probably a deal breaker enough for me. In a modern context, I understand that differentially hardened blades will do that, but I think something should be done to, to stiffen it up just a little bit so that it doesn't take a set as easily. Uh, that might be historically accurate, and maybe if it didn't break, the bendiness would, would be a uh, pro to people because maybe that's how historically they acted in, in battle and the like. Um, to me though, it's it's not as fun if you go to chop things because this looks like a meaty chopper. I want to be able to chop things like uh, some branches and stuff in a bad cut, taking a deep bend uh, would, would be 
disappointing. Also, it came kind of pre-bent anyway. I think it's too soft. That would be a deal breaker enough for me. Uh, but obviously, it has bigger issues that need to be solved. So uh, in its current configuration, again, I would, I would say no, I don't recommend it. I would recommend avoiding it. And if it's released in a different configuration with their folded steel, then maybe that would change things up a little bit for me. Anyway, that's all I've got. Again, special thanks to LK Chen. Um, and again, I'll put links in the description down below if anything changes or I have more supplemental information to include or something like that. And that's all I got. As always, cheers and thanks for watching.